John Bowden, Rock History Music. How you doing? It's been a while since we've done a live stream, mainly because we've been incredibly busy. Uh, our daughter's also been somewhat challenging. She's autistic. She's 25. She's on new medication. We've been uh, let me put this down. Uh, our daughter's also... I've got some things going on all over the place here. Um, yeah, Danica's been a little challenging lately, and I thought because it's near the end of the month and we certainly haven't reached our quota this month, it's been a tough month on YouTube. It's, it's, YouTube's not what it used to be. It's, it's uh, getting, um, let's just say before we get to our subject, I can understand why people are quitting YouTube. Not that we're going to quit, but it's entered our minds a few times about how the income is just all over the place. That's why we started Patreon because we, we thought we've got to subsidize our income here because you know one month we're up here and the next month we're down here and it's it's harder every single month to make a living and we do make a living on on uh, on YouTube and I just retired from my radio career lots going on but let's talk about well there's been a lot of people who have been nominated for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and here's Here's sort of where the ballot is. Let me just make it a little bit bigger for you right now. This is what's happening. Dave Matthews is number one. Forner is number two. If Forner doesn't get in, like, I don't know what to tell you. Because if any band deserves to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, that's, if you hear yelling, that's our daughter in the background. That's why Shannon's not on with us, because she's just going through an awful lot lately. So, um, anyway, Forner is number two. Peter Frampton, here's another guy, Frampton. Like a long time before Frampton comes alive and a long time after that, he's produced some really, really good music. Uh, Ozzy's number four, Cher, yell ask me, is at number five, Lenny Kravitz and Cool and the Gang, then Mariah Carey, Oasis, Sinead O'Connor, Sade, Jane's Addiction, and so on. So that's kind of what's going on with the with the, the voting. I do believe, and I don't want to sound presumptuous, but I, I, I think it's a pretty safe bet now, don't want to jinx anything, that Foreigner will get into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And we've talked to, to Lou Graham about whether he'd perform with them. I mean, he's come out and said recently, this is an interview from quite a few months ago, from before they were nominated, but... He said that he believes the original members of the band, now some of them are no longer with us, uh, the original lineup will be in the fold if they get in. And he says, I would think Jukebox Hero would be one song, and I want to know what Love Is would be another song. And we'll have Lou on here, because I interviewed him for about an hour and a half, quite a few months ago. So he thinks that's what's going to happen. Of course, uh, Mick Jones has had a lot of... Uh, health issues through the years. He doesn't perform with the band anymore. As a matter of fact, the band that you see, if you go see Foreigner tonight, not sure if they're playing, is not Foreigner. It's not. It's just not. There's no original members left. Not not any member that sang a lot of the hits. Now we're going to go through the albums before we talk to Luke. And for the folks who have uh, joined up and and talked to us, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Um, Fifty people on so far. These are, according to Worldwide Sales. The biggest foreigner album. Some of these might surprise you. For me, as much as I love Double Vision, I was surprised that Double Vision outsold the first album, the self-titled album. Uh, but it did. Their number one album is their first greatest hits that came out that looked like a jukebox. Remember that one? Uh, it's not on the list below me, uh, but it's 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 their biggest selling record. And so far, the records album, that's what it's called, is... Their greatest hits from 1982 sold 7,000,000, That's their biggest album. Their second biggest studio album, that is, is uh, number four. I don't think that surprises a lot of people because th that's 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 our daughter. She's just having a hard time, so sorry. She's okay. I've had to do this today. I had to come on to do a thing. But if anybody, she, we're not killing anybody. It's the first time I've come on to do a live stream where Danica who's 25 and autistic, is just having a tough day. Foreigner 4 had six singles and four hits, which were Urgent, Waiting for a Girl Like You, Jukebox Hero, and Break It Up. I didn't know Break It Up was actually a hit. That's their second biggest album, but biggest studio album, 7.3 million. Double Vision, 1978, outsold the debut. Like I said, 7.2 million. That was Hot Blooded, Double Vision, the title song, and Blue Morning Blue Day were all hits. Foreigner... 
Uh, the debut album comes in at number four from 77. 5.2 million feels like the first time. How appropriate was that? Because it was the first big one. Uh, Cold as Ice, Long, Long Way From Home, which I've always loved that song. We'll get to Lou Graham in just a second. Their fifth biggest selling was their third album, Head Games, from 1979. Five million copies, five plus with some change. Five singles, two hits, Dirty White Boy. Man, I love that song. And Head Games... Uh, Age of Provocateur was number six, 1984, 4.1 million. And their first number, and well, actually, their first and only number one hit, uh, I Want to Know What Love Is, and that was Yesterday. And then we get into, like, the very best and beyond from 92, 2.3, Inside Information, uh, did not sell uh, that. Well, well it, it sold by uh, over a million copies. Uh, complete Greatest Hits, a million and then you get the Kelly Hansen album, which sold 100,000 copies. He's the current lead singer of Foreigner. So we're going to talk about some members that can and can't make it before we get to Lou Graham. This is, uh, of course, Ian McDonald. He died in 2022 at 75. He was with King Crimson. He was on the first three Foreigner albums, Foreigner, Double Vision, and Head Games. I always looked at him as the good-looking guy in the band. I mean, you know, uh, Mick Jones, good looking guy, and not that looks matters, but you know what, as far as an album cover, what looks good, Al Greenwood, um, he's 72, he was also on the first three album, Egg Gagliardi, uh, died in 2014, he was 62, he was on the first two Foreigner albums, uh, Dennis Elliott, he's 73, Became a sculptor when he left. He was uh, played on the first four uh, studio albums. And then, of course, a, a guy who's played with the Small Faces, um, Peter Frampton, Spooky Tooth, David Gilmour, uh, Bad Company. He was on the first. He was on um, Foreigner, uh, Four, Agent Provocateur, Inside Information, and Unusual Heat. And now let's... And besides, and you know, I haven't juggled like this. You know, one of the things that I I started telling myself that I should go on live more because I I have my stream over here, I have my information over here, I have an SLR camera here, I have a microphone here, and it's a lot of juggling. But let's, you know, one of the one of the reasons we came on here is to talk with uh, Lou Graham. And as I mentioned, he did say he would be invited to go on stage and to play with. Mick Jones, if Mick is in the condition to to really uh, uh, play with the band, let me just make sure I start my live stream here so I can talk to you. Um, there we go. There we go. Okay, we're going to talk to Lou Graham. Not a lot of people talking tonight. That's interesting. I'm not sure why. This is Lou talking about let's um, the debut album and the, and the cover of the debut. By the way, was this ever a picture? Was this ever like a, a, a did they paint? Was this ever uh, like, a, did someone take a picture? Or did someone just draw it? I, I think the picture was taken and, and uh, it was decided that, that it needed a little more life to it. So we had someone characterize it. Right. But, and I like the way it turned out. Oh, oh that was quick. <laughs> that was a, I can't tell sometimes how long these clips are going to be. Uh, we're going to talk about, and we'll talk about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in a second. This is Lou Graham talking about going into the second, the sophomore album, which, remember, outsold the first. Between the first and the second album, you're, okay, you know that you've got something. You know it could be big, because, I mean, you never know with the second album, right? I mean, you guys certainly did not suffer the sophomore jinx, because... That's true, but, but so many bands did, you know? Yeah. There were bands who had first, great, great first albums, and, and and you never heard of them after that anymore. Well, you went five times platinum with the first one in 77, and then Double Vision is seven times platinum. Not only did you beat the sophomore jinx, you blew it out of the water. Yes, uh, yes but, did. but going into the second one, before you started recording it, what were, what were you, as a young man, what were you thinking? You were thinking this was gonna, you were, you were set? How were you thinking? Well, I was very aware of the sophomore jinx and, and uh, I, I, I was I was uh, uh, aggressive about not falling prey to that, but but I was nervous too. I was worried. 
you know, but when I started hearing the idea, when Mick started playing, you know, like I, I said, I'd go to his apartment, we'd have dinner, he'd play me some ideas, and he'd let me pick an idea, and we'd start working on it. Uh, if, he, if, he had, if he had a favorite, he'd play that for me. He says, I really think this could be something. Let's work on this. And did he ever do did he ever do a guide vocal thing where because I know he sang, but he wasn't you, obviously. Uh, he, usually if if he presented me a new idea, it was it was the guitar and there was a, a little soft vocal in there just to give me the his idea of what he liked the melody and the phrasing to be, you know? And sometimes we would stick to that. And sometimes we would start there and, and end up someplace else. Double Vision, how, how did that start off? I remember my reaction to Double Vision, first of all, as an album title, but as a song, I remember thinking, I don't know why I thought this. I'm going, I never would have thought of calling a song Double Vision. But man, that, that, that's because it, 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 it sparks curiosity right off the bat. Tell me about that one. Well, we, we, uh, we, we were working on the music for the song Double Vision, and, and I was just scanning melodies over it. I had no lyrics. And and it was the hockey play, NHL hockey playoffs. And in my vocal booth, I had a little tiny TV taped to the wall. No volume, obviously. You didn't want anything to bleed into my mic. But I, I could see the, 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 the uh, visual of it. And every time we take a two minute break, I turn the volume up a little bit. And uh, it was my team, the, the, the New York Rangers. And I think they were playing uh, Montreal Canadiens, you know. And, and John Davidson was the goalie for, for New York. And, and while I was watching it, one of the Montreal guys, they weren't even playing, it was a timeout. One of the Montreal guys skated in front of him and whacked him with the back of the stick. And he went down like a ton of bricks, knocked out cold. Okay? And, and then there was a big fight between the two teams. And, and meanwhile, the, the, the trainers and, and the coaches and a couple of players helped John up to his skates. But he, he was really gone. And they basically... Uh, uh, walked him over, you know, skated him over to the sidelines, and, and then he went in the back room, and, and the second string only came out and played. But, but, but after that, they would give reports that, that John was feeling a little better, he's still dizzy, and he's experiencing... Double vision. And, 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 and I heard, I, when he said that, I go, that's it, that's it, you know. And, and suddenly I fill my eyes with this double vision. That is crazy. See, yes. there, I knew there was a good story behind that. I love Lou Graham. I love talking to him. I'm not sure why the, uh, it's strange. Some of the comments are not coming up on, on YouTube. We're, we're getting, um, uh, Grimber Twin says, I read Lou Graham's, we'll have more from the next clip. Lou will talk about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. This is before they were nominated, remember? And as it stands now, let me see it again. Uh, there you go. Fan ballots. That's not the, 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 the dividing, the deciding factor, but considering Foreigner's in second place. And uh, we've got Dave Matthews Band, Foreigner, Peter Frampton, Ozzy Osbourne, Sheriff, Lenny Kravitz, and Cool in the Gang. Oh, my poor daughter, she's just having a hard time. I'm glad most of you can't probably hear this. Shannon's here looking after her, and our son Chase is here, and, and it's just been a struggle. But anyway, um, so uh, uh, Grimmer Twin says, I read Lou Graham's autobiography a few years ago. Cool dude. I thought Foreigner is a good rock and roll band. As for an American rock bands go, of course, they're uh, uh, Mick Jones is British. A few of them have been. But what a bunch of bang, they could have treated Lou better. I'm not going to say that. You can see the comments. Uh, Sunny Stormy says, greetings. Uh, Greg Bar uh, uh, Gardner says, love you, John. <laughs> Thank you. I wish you didn't uh, oh, go political on a recent post. That's my own personal post. So um, cheers. I know all the uh, discouragements on YouTube. I have 46 subscribers. That's it. Um, yeah, that's really tough on YouTube lately. 
Uh, a lot of people have been, uh, you know, really having a hard time trying to uh, trying to make it work on YouTube. You know, it's it's a difficult it's a difficult life right now on YouTube to try to make a go of it as far as a living. So it's it's kind of crazy. Uh, Sunny Stormy says, "Cheers, Professor Retro." Um, Sunny Stormy, 2.83K here. Oh, okay. Hall of Shame, Break It Up is a great song. Sonia, how you doing? Uh, Danica, yes, I know. She's just having a hard time. Uh, Bob Perry, this should have been the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame 20 years ago. They should have, but I don't know if they were, they were, uh, um, they were eligible. Here's Lou Graham talking about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Check it out. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. If, uh, would you go? I I I I think I would go, but 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 because I, 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 you know they want you to go. I mean, the fans would want. No, you to I don't go. know that. I don't know that. They've never said that to me. Uh, for some reason, there there's bad blood with Foreigner's old management and Mick, because because apparently Mick and our and our and our old manager didn't thought that we should have been in the Hall of Fame when, when when they had all our peers in and were now moved on to another generation of rockers and they completely ignored us. So, so Mick and our manager went in there and apparently had a big blowout with, with the the head of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and, and a couple of the, the executives there. And it ended up that they told Mick and our manager, I don't care what you've done. I don't care care what you do it'll be a cold day in hell when you'll be in the rock hall of fame that's what that's what they, that's what they accomplished okay wow. and, and mick was close friends with what's the guy from rolling stone uh jan verner yeah they were they were close friends their wives were close friends they were always out dinner at a bar or going to a live rock show or something they, they were inseparable after that little to do, they haven't spoken since, and that that had to be about 14, 15 years ago. That's pretty strange, huh? But now, as I mentioned, Lou, uh, not that long ago after they were nominated, had said, "As far as I know, if we win, if we get in, this is more current than my interview." He says the original lineup uh, will try to get in. Of course, some of them have passed on. The original lineup was, you know, there were six guys on there. And, uh, and then Rick Wills joined up later on. And they're like, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll show you what I've got here as far as. Um, there we go. Oops, sorry. Sometimes this thing just doesn't work. I don't know why. There we go. It's uh, having, I'm having problems with uh, my, uh, hold on. There we go. Let me just go down the, 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 the people in the band. Ian McDonald, that's who you're looking at. He died in 2022, 75 years old, was with King Crimson, uh, was on the first three albums, Foreigner, Double Vision, and Head Games. I'm having so much problems with my, there we go. Al Greenwood, he's 72. He's also on the first three albums. And this is so weird that I'm having so much problems. And we've got Ed Gagliardi. He died in 2020, 2014. Sorry, I'm very distracted because my daughter's shouting in the background. Uh, he was 62 years old. Yeah, and then... Uh, Dennis Elliott, he's 73. He left the band to become a sculptor. He's quite popular as a sculptor. I'm having to do this back and forth. And then Rick Wills. Played with so many different people. Small Faces, Roxy Music, Peter Frampton, Spooky Tooth, David Gilmore, Bad Company. A lot of people. So uh, And Mick Jones, of course, but he's not in good health. And, and Lou Graham still can sing. And let's see what happens. Let's see what. Let's play another clip because my daughter is just shouting up a. She's autistic. She's having a bad day. She just got home. Uh, let's talk about "Dirty White Boy," one of my favorite songs from Head Games. 
Dirty White Boy, was that about somebody? It was uh, n nobody I knew. It, w it was just a, a conglomeration of, of people like that that I had met, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I, I remember of all the songs you guys have, that's one. That's the one I play the loudest, by the way. That's it's just the way do, it goes. Do, 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 I'm not sure if you know, but that that song in that album was met with a lot of disdain. Really? Why? Uh, in in the northeastern uh, radio stations and in the Midwest, it it was considered a uh, um, an obscene album cover. To oh. to see a young girl in a boy's bathroom, wiping her number off the wall. You know, and and by the look on her face, her look is like this, like somebody caught her. You know. Yeah, I remember that now. Yeah. yeah. And, and then Dirty White Boy, somehow, you know, it, it's about a rough and tough guy and all that stuff. But the Dirty White Boy was somehow deemed uh, racial. It had nothing to do with race. Nothing. It was about a tough kid, a dirty white boy, you know? And, 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 and so, so it was banned at, at uh, the big Boston, I can't remember what station, the, a big Boston station and, and a number of stations throughout the Midwest. And there were album burnings. They were, they were, there, there were bonfires with not just the Head Games album, but, but if, if they were offended by the Head Games, they burned all the Foreigner albums. It was insane. Well, that's, you know, as o they say. Over nothing. Over yeah. nothing. Yeah, yeah. Your first uh, co-write on the radio with the band Cold as Ice. Tell me that, the, 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 again, I, I hate to sound it, give you a cliche uh, question, but did you know that this, this, I mean, I remember in high school, everyone sang that song. We loved that song. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, we, we didn't know, we knew that it, that it was infectious. Yeah. And, and that it had a I'm certain playing a lot of cliffs. Uh, uh, clips that, that, that was endearing about it. And, and, and it was, it was rocky, but it was poppy too, you know? Yeah. And, uh, that, that's just what we needed really. And, and uh, uh, we had high hopes for it, and it did not disappoint. Songwriters Hall of Fame, that must mean a lot to you. It, it was, mm. it, I, didn't, I didn't even see that coming. When, when, when uh, I got a, a, a congratulations letter from them, I had only briefly heard about them, but apparently they've been going on a long time. And their first, you know, their first inductee was Francis Scott Key. I don't know who that is. Sorry. He wrote the Star Spec Angle Banner. Oh, wow. Okay. I know that. But they didn't <laughs> induct him back then. He was obviously, I think the Songwriters Hall of Fame has been around about 20 years or something like that. But, but I heard that he was their first inductee because of that song. When you, when you sang Feels Like the First Time, uh, when, when you went in and you were singing that song, did you know that was a hit? Did you get a feeling like, wow, this is uh, a... Yes. Yeah, and Mick and I both felt it was a hit, and I had nothing to do with it, but I knew I just knew it was a hit. If Atlantic decided that that, that would be a single, you know, cut, because af after all our songs were written, we had our favorites that we thought would be big, but but everything had to go through Atlantic, and they had their own choices, you know. Well, there you go. That's uh, We're going to play some more coming up tomorrow. Some of the more controversial things that uh, Lou says about his old uh, songwriting partner and cohort in crime, um, uh, Mick Jones. And it, you know, it's sobering stuff. It, bands sometimes don't always get along in the long run. It's uh, It was Rick Emmett who told me, do you want to go on a car ride or a, a road trip with uh, your ex-wife? And I went, well, actually, I get along really well with my ex-wife. I hang out with her and her current husband. So, uh, and that was a messy breakup, but, you know, we get over it. But uh, but that's kind of where, that's kind of uh, where we're at. Uh, my daughter is having a complete meltdown. Our 25-year-old autistic wonder uh, downstairs, and she just got home from the bus. I didn't time this up very, very well. So thank you for everyone who supported us. No, we're not going to quit YouTube, even though, 
Uh, financially, it's been a cra- <laughs> it's been crazy town, but we you know we make enough to 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 get by, and that's good. But I can understand why so many people are quitting YouTube. It just makes no sense. We released the most videos and the most high quality videos we ever released in December. And our and, and and listen, it's not just because it was December, because last December we did very well. And the December before that we did really w- w- well. And we're just looking at that, that it's just gone kooky. So join our Patreon if you want to make a donation. Uh, we have a PayPal link in the description. But, you know, mostly just subscribe to the channel and join our newsletter. There's a link right in the description where you can get updates. YouTube's not letting our subscribers, we're, we're at 130 now, almost 130, know that know when we're releasing a video which is very yeah sobering it's a that's another thing we have 130 subscribe a thousand subscribers why aren't uh why aren't they being told we've released a video so anyway it's been an interesting week our daughter downstairs doesn't help it's not her fault she's autistic and if you've heard her screaming downstairs my son's with her he's he's 20 uh dan uh, shannon's with her She's downstairs, so they're okay. But uh, to, well, let's just stay away from any, uh, any loudness for now. Take good care of yourself, guys. Bye-bye.